Hey, everybody. So we here at the Oregonian Oregon Live are getting so excited about the upcoming annular solar eclipse, which is taking place this Saturday, October 14th, across the country. The shadow of the eclipse is going to cross Oregon on its way over North and South America, and people are expected to gather in big numbers to watch it. It should be a really cool event, and to get you excited, we wanted to replay our episode from February where we went over all the things you need to know about the big day. But before we get into that episode, we wanted to give some important updates uh, about the big day. All right, so where do we jump in? The weather, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) Weather is a big deal for these kinds of events, astronomical events. You don't want a lot of cloud cover. You don't want a lot of heavy cloud cover. But this is, you know, October. It's Oregon. You don't really know. Um, Vicky, I was looking at uh, weather.gov for some forecasts for Saturday, and it's looking like uh, bad to iffy across the path of the eclipse. So it looks like if you're out on the coast or in the Willamette Valley, um, there's a good chance you might see some rain. Um, The folks out in Klamath Falls or in Southeast Oregon might get some partly sunny or mostly cloudy skies, but I'm told from uh, some eclipse watchers that if they just get a little break in the clouds, that's all they need to have a good time. So if you are willing to bet on the chances of those clouds moving out of the way for just a second, then you might get lucky here. (laughs) That's right. You know, just just try to temper your expectations, I suppose. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Anything else about weather we should know, Jamie? You know, I'm just told that like mostly cloudy is is way better than like chance of rain. Those are apparently are like a big difference when you get those heavy clouds. That's when you have an issue. But mostly cloudy means you might you might get a break. So look for that. Look for those words in your forecast. All right. Also, we should note that there are some fun events coming up in Klamath County. Yeah, since we recorded our episode back in February, there have been a few events that have solidified. Uh, Chief among them is Eclipse Fest 2023, which is a big multi-day festival that will take place outside Klamath Falls. There's going to be a concert from Smash Mouth. There's going to be a lot of family-friendly events. There's going to be camping and, of course, an Eclipse watch party as well. If you want to buy tickets for that, they're at EclipseFest23.com. And pretty close in Klamath Falls at Running Y Resort, there's going to be one called Eclipse Into Nature. Um, And there's going to be a uh, watch party there co-hosted by OMSI and Oregon Tech. Um, There's going to be some live streams from NASA, from the Eclipse all over. Um, That should be a pretty cool one as well. And then at Crater Lake National Park, no big events planned, but... Definitely a lot of people are planning to be there. The park is bracing for big crowds. The lodging is all booked up there. Um, So that might be a a great place to see the eclipse. But again, weather at Crater Lake is especially dicey this time of year. It can be really beautiful if it's clear, but this is also the time of year when it begins to snow. And looking at that forecast, um, there is some snow in the forecast (laughs) at Crater Lake this week. So um, just something to keep in mind, something to look at. Um, but there should be a bunch of folks down there in Klamath County um, excited about this eclipse. So even if the weather's a little dicey, you could still walk away with seeing Smash Mouth live. And, you know, <laughs> that's a win right there. That's right. That's right. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, wherever you are in Oregon, you're going to be able to see a partial eclipse. This is not a total solar eclipse. We get into all of that in this episode. But um, if there's a break in the clouds, if there's a little bit of clear skies, this should be a really cool thing to see. Anything else to note, Jamie? If you can see it, go see it. It should be fun. I think it'll be a really nice time. So, um, you know, uh, this this doesn't happen that often. And uh, even if it pop your head out in the, the Saturday morning, just take a look. I think that's worth it. So if you're going out there, best of luck. We hope you are able to get a little bit of some clear skies to see it. And without further ado, here is the full episode from February. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale, 
And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're talking about one of the biggest astronomical events of the year, and that is an annular solar eclipse, which will cross over Oregon this summer. Vicki, I'm so excited for this. I've been talking it up to everyone who will listen, because even though this isn't like a total solar eclipse, it's still going to be a really cool event that I think is is worth seeing. Yeah. Jamie, are you big into heading out and viewing eclipses when they happen? You have to. I mean, I like it all. Like I like an eclipse. I like a lunar eclipse. I like a big moon, a meteor shower, cool stuff in the sky, I think is always worth checking out. But when you're talking about like the cool stuff in the sky hierarchy, A solar eclipse is pretty much about as cool as it gets. Right. Okay. So what was the last one that you saw? Well, I think the last one that most of us saw, the 2017 total solar eclipse that came across Oregon and much of the United States. Um, I, you know, uh, for the Oregonian, a bunch of us went out to cover the event. Um, So I was at uh, Timothy Lake up on Mount Hood with about... 50 other people, um, a pretty small little gathering of people who were camped there at the campsite. And it was such a cool experience to be in that path of totality when the sun was completely blocked out by the moon. And you could see the like atmosphere of the sun, the corona is what it's called, right? Uh And to see that and to have that experience of seeing the sun totally blocked out in the daytime, it was it was profound. I mean, people's reactions were crazy. People were like, either speechless or some people started like screaming or running around <laughs> in circles. Um, I, this is, this is weird. Did to say, you scream like, Jamie? I, <laughs> no, but like my knees buckled. <laughs> like I, I like, I like, uh, unconsciously fell to my knees. Like I had like a physical reaction like that, um, which has never happened to me for anything before. And, oh uh, it was really cool. Just, just an absolutely wild experience. So, that's a total solar eclipse. And right. we should we should point out here that what we're talking about today is an annular solar eclipse. And those are two different things completely. Yes. Also not to be confused with the word annual, but annular. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> right. Describe to us exactly what an annular eclipse is. Okay. Well, so in general, a solar eclipse happens when a new moon gets directly between the Earth and the sun. So the moon will block out the sun, right? Hmm. And in a, in a total solar eclipse, the moon is close enough to the earth that it completely blocks out the sun. But in an annular eclipse, the moon is just too far away to do that. So what you end up having is sort of what they call the ring of fire effect, yeah. right? The amount of sun that is still around the moon, which is really cool in its own right. And what's one of the things that's cool about this is as you see... Um, the the moon in front of the sun that way, the light comes through that kind of rough outer edge of the moon because the moon is not a perfect circle, right? It's full of mountains and craters. And the light can sometimes kind of bead as it goes through all of those mountains and craters on the moon, which is a really cool effect. It's called Bailey's beads. And that's something you don't see every day, obviously. Um, So while you won't be able to see the corona, you won't be able to have that experience people look for in a total solar eclipse, it's still a really cool event that like if you're into this sort of thing, or even if you're not, like it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, Okay, so let's get into the logistics of this, because this isn't happening until October 14th, right? Yeah, that's right, Vicky. Um, So this is October 14th in the morning, kind of like, you know, first thing in the morning, basically, depending on what that means to you. For me, it's first thing in the morning. So the the partial eclipse of this will begin at about 8.05 a.m. on that morning of the 14th. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just when the, the, the moon starts to cover the sun, right? It's a gradual process. So right. by about 9.16 a.m., we're going to be reaching that full eclipse, so that full like ring of fire effect. And how long that lasts depends on how close you are to the center of this path of the eclipse. So it's like a 90 mile wide band where you can yeah. see this full eclipse. The closer you are to the middle, the longer it lasts. So those who are really right in the middle of it get to experience that ring of fire for like 
a full four and a half minutes, which is actually a really long time. That is. For comparison, <laughs> that total solar eclipse last time, I, I want to say it was it lasted maybe a minute, maybe a minute and a half for those at the, the, the very center. So uh-huh. four and a half minutes is a long time. If yeah. you're farther at the outer edge, you may see it for a minute or less. Um, so that you kind of want to get in there. And so people might be wondering, like, why are we talking about this so ahead of time? But uh, (laughs) because of the popularity, like, as you probably saw when you were out there last time, like, these places will pack up, um, you know, the if you look at the map and see where the best like viewing areas are, you know, we'll we'll get into that here. But you got to kind of plan ahead for this, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, again, it's not the same as a total solar eclipse of 2017. That was something where people from across the world were coming to Oregon specifically because it was like the best place to see it. This time, it's not quite the case. Oregon is actually like not a great place to see this because <laughs> October, Oregon, not great weather a situation. Smoky. Might yeah, be and a we'll little get into smoky. that, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're not seeing probably going to see the rush to fill all the hotels. But you, I mean, we are definitely already seeing some of that um, Crater Lake, which is in the path. Um, the Crater Lake Lodge opened for an extra weekend at the end of its season. Mm-hmm. So people could stay there for the eclipse. And those rooms are long booked up. They booked up, right. uh, I want to say a few weeks ago. Um, so, you know, places, campgrounds that are in here, hotels, you're going to see them already start to book up. So if you don't already have plans, definitely get on this now so you can make sure you can get somewhere to stay. Okay. So let's get into, yeah, the path a little bit and some of the areas that will be a little bit uh, popular, might already be completely booked, but um, <laughs> kind of like the best viewing areas for this. So if you look at this this map, and we'll, we'll throw a link to this map in our post here and in the show notes. But this basically this this the path cuts this kind of um, southeastern diagonal line across the southwestern part of the state. I know that's kind of confusing, yeah. but um, basically it starts off in the sort of central southern Oregon coast. Um, that center line hits the coast right there at the Oregon Dunes, just south of Florence, um, and extends up to like Newport and just past Bandon. So that's kind of your you, you know that gives you an idea of how how big this area is. And it goes southeast across Oregon, um, you know, over Roseburg and Eugene, over Crater Lake, as we mentioned, um, over Summer Lake, and you're kind of getting out into the high desert. Um, And if you're like in the Alvar Desert, you'll be able to see it a little bit, Steens Mountain to a certain extent. And then it kind of goes down beyond that into Nevada and, um, you know, farther down into the U.S. So in Oregon, you're looking to basically want to get into the southern part of the state, um, whether that's the coast, the, you know, um, the southern Willamette Valley or out in the desert somewhere. Amazing. So we talked about Crater Lake. Um, Where where do you think where are you eyeing, Jamie, to go and see this? (laughs) Well, I I talked to um, uh, the the director of space science education at OMSI, uh, whose name is Jim Todd, and we chatted a bit about this. Um, because he obviously is a big eclipse person as well. And he said, you know, people are going to go to the coast because it's the coast and that's where it's first hitting landfall. But the coast is actually kind of a terrible place to go because even in the summer, the coast is often really foggy in the morning. And because Mm -hmm. this eclipse is happening first thing in the morning, the odds of it being clouded out are pretty high up there. So you might be tempted to go hike around the Oregon dunes to see it would be an incredible place to see this, but you just are really run the risk of, of having it being fogged out. Um, He said, once you kind of get onto the Eastern side of the Cascades out into the desert a little bit, that's kind of the place to go. Um, Jim told me he's going to um, sort of the Klamath basin area, um, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of around Klamath falls. Um, That area is is going to be a, a nice spot to see it. Um, or at least it gives you better chances of having good conditions to see it. Right, right. So let's see. Are there any other places here that you're looking at on the map that might not be like as popular as Crater Lake, but still great, great place to go and see it? Yeah, um, you know, kind of in the same vein of what we were just talking about, some of that, that you know, um, south, southern Oregon desert area is pretty good. Um, if you look at like, you know, um, Summer Lake. Um, it has, there's like Summer Lake Hot Springs right there. I'm not sure if they're booked up already. They 
probably are, um, Lake Avert, uh, Christmas Valley, a lot of these places that people don't go to very often um, might have uh, it might be a really nice place to go and if you're trying to avoid crowds or you're just looking for a cool place to, to do it. Um, I think Fort Rock actually is a really cool spot to go. It's a really cool rock formation there um, just south of Bend. Mm-hmm. And that's like, I don't know, I just feel like being in this like volcanic circle out there in the desert with the, you know, the eclipse above you seems really cool. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I like that idea. <laughs> uh, you know, so I, I think Heart Mountain is down there as well. Um, I, I would say just look for some cool spots out there in that desert. You might have some better chances of, of seeing this and just make sure that wherever you are, that you're not obscuring the rising sun. So if you're like really, if you're on the east side of the mountains, but you're really close to the mountains, you're not going to be able to see the rising sun in time. So you want to be able to make sure you have like a clear view. That's why being out there in sort of that flatter open expanse is is maybe a better bet than, say, in the Coast Range Mountains or even in the Willamette Valley in some places. Right, right. Let's get into Eclipse Viewing 101 because <laughs> you can't look directly into this thing. It's going to it. damage your eyes. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it's recommended that you get what is called Eclipse Glasses, if that's yeah. even like a you know, what exactly are eclipse glasses? Yeah, I mean, they're basically like um, specially tinted glasses that protect your eyes from like the UV rays of the sun, right? Um, So like really, really intense sunglasses, you know, but they're these are special ones. You don't want to just use any old sunglasses. You want to use stuff that is specifically designed for looking at eclipses. So I, I know that folks who saw the total solar eclipse, you know, at that moment of totality, you can take your glasses off because there's no more sunlight, right? But because there's still sunlight here coming through, you have to wear these eclipse glasses throughout the entire thing. Otherwise, you're going to burn your eyes. Um, (laughs) So very important. Um, If folks still have eclipse glasses from 2017, um, you can, you know, pull those out. Uh, I I know that like those just flooded everywhere in Oregon at the time. So I've got like 10 pairs hiding somewhere in my closet. (laughs) Um, but you can also get them online and I'm sure that when we get closer to the event, you'll be able to pick these up at convenience stores or places within the path. If you're going down there, um, it's not super hard to find them at very least you can go online, Google it and, uh, pick some up that way. So I imagine Jamie that you are going to attempt to photograph this, right? Well, I gotta tell you for all this talk of the eclipse here, I actually have, um, other plans. I have uh, plans that before uh, I knew this, I'm going to be outside of the path. Um, no. So, uh, I'm actually not going to be able to see this one in, in totality. So I'm just like super psyched, like, uh, to live vicariously through everybody else. Yeah. Um, but someone will photograph it certainly. And, um, you know, that is a whole other process of, of photographing it. But, um, you know, I, I would say for folks who want to try to document it that way, there are lots of um, guides online. Um, I have not tried to, to, to photograph any clips before personally, so I don't have any tips or tricks of the trade. Um, but there's lots of people online you have. You can find a lot of guidance there. Exactly. Also, not even just the event itself, um, photographing the people taking it in. I love those photos because it's people in oh, awe. Yeah. You might catch someone like Jamie Hale falling to their knees. You never know what you can capture <laughs> with these reactions. That's right. In the, the 2017 eclipse, because we had photographers across the state photographing it, I just turned my camera to the audience. So when I talk about those reactions, I have a video somewhere of that happening. Um, <laughs> and it's really cool. I, I'm so glad that I have that. Um, because you get that human aspect of it. And I think that's, it kind of goes to like what draws us to these events to begin with. I mean, it's um, seeing these, these sort of this great celestial dance is a Mm -hmm. really cool opportunity. And, you know, the opportunity to sort of feel um, small and the size of the moon, the sun, um, you know, is, is really cool. So uh, I I really hope that people go out and check it out and uh, have some sort of meaningful experience with it or just have a fun time. I think that's yeah. that's totally rewarding in and of itself. Yeah. So all in all, obviously, if you're if you're in the Portland area, you're going to have to make uh, a drive down south, few hours worth. Um, 
do you think it's it's going to be worth that drive and you know maybe a trip and booking a place to stay? Yeah, it's an interesting question. When we were talking about the total eclipse, I, I talked to like a long time eclipse watcher, and he said <laughs> the difference between being seeing the eclipse partially uh, and seeing it in totality was like the difference between going to prom and getting married, which was a great great analogy. He's totally spot on. Um, I've talked to people who just stayed in Portland for that eclipse and just saw the partial version mm-hmm. of that eclipse. And they were like, it was neat. It was fun. But mm-hmm. those who saw it in totality were like, it was a like significant life experience. Wow. Um, this is not quite the same. So you're not going to maybe have that kind of reaction. But, um, you know, it, I think if you are at all curious about this, it's definitely worth, you know, taking a, a quick drive a couple hours down south um, or wherever. Um, at very least, you get a cool road trip out of it. Um, but just the chance to see something like this is pretty cool. It doesn't happen every day, and it's not going to happen for a little while longer again in Oregon, at least. So I, I think it's definitely worth checking out if you have the time, if you have any interest at all. Yeah. Well, I currently do not have any plans as of right now uh, during that weekend. So we'll see. I. I don't know if I would want to go to Crater Lake or maybe try go going out to the desert somewhere. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Now I just have to see like what is booked and what's not. Well, I know the Oregonian secured a couple of rooms at Crater Lake. So, you know, maybe you'll be uh, uh, assigned with that role. <laughs> this is news to me. <laughs> you could, you could is- probably... Uh, uh, talk your way into it if not (laughs) okay well man i didn't even know apparently maybe someone's gotta go someone's gotta gotta document it (laughs) i've got a camera let's do it. that's right that's right (laughs) okay so looking forward jamie to future uh the next eclipse that will come to oregon after this one what is that well, the next annular eclipse that's crossing Oregon is going to be uh, in February of 2046. It's going to cross Ooh. southern and eastern Oregon. Um, and another annular eclipse is going to be coming on November 15th, 2077. Um, so those are your next chances <laughs> to see an annular eclipse in <laughs> in Oregon. Um, it's one of these things where like, you know, you, it's not quite like a once in a lifetime thing. Like the last time one came to Oregon, it was 2012. But before that, it was like 1865. Um, so like it can be a once in a lifetime thing. Um, but, it, you know, if folks who uh, are planning on, you know, being around the next 20 some odd years can maybe see it again in 2046. You know, as um, we were saying these years, I'm like calculating in my head how old I will be <laughs> at that time. <laughs> yeah. I remember back when I was young and spry and I saw the last <laughs> annular eclipse. Of course, people who want to see a total solar eclipse, it's not going to happen in Oregon anytime soon, but um, there is going to be one in 2024 across the U.S., um, and that is definitely worth checking out. So I know I am planning on traveling with my family to San Antonio, Texas to Ooh. hopefully catch that one in 2024. So um, I, I definitely recommend folks, if you did not catch the last total solar eclipse, go check out the next one. Make a little yeah. a little trip out of it. Um, try to see it. And uh, if you're at all interested, like I said, in this annual eclipse, go see it. It's worth it. As long as weather doesn't spoil the show, fingers crossed, it should be a really cool event. Yeah. I feel like you should just write these all down in your calendar, add them to your phone so you know that they're happening. I feel like they always sneak up on me. I'm like, oh, that's happening today. Uh, Okay, I don't have any plans. So, uh, you know, plan ahead and yeah, make a fun trip out of it. Go somewhere new. That's right. That's right. I've got a stargazing calendar for 2023 that came out at the beginning of the year. So if you're looking for this kind of thing, you can Google Oregon Live stargazing calendar 2023. You'll find it. Um, lots of good ideas there. Like Vicky said, add them to your calendar. Um, make plans, go out and see them. I think it's a really great way to connect with uh, our nature and with the cosmos. Cannot agree more. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. But until next time, folks, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. 
please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast, as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you are interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale, Andrew Thien, and Elena Neal Sachs. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.